those who lived through the storm said it felt like the world States was going to end. Described cyclone cyclone Pam simply tore these specific way. islands apart. Vanuatu is used to storms, but these homes weren't built to withstand winds of 200 miles an hour. On March the 14th, 2015, a Category 5 cyclone that was later designated as Cyclone Pam ran straight over the top of Vanuatu. Vanuatu is a very remote island chain about a thousand miles east of the east coast of Australia. Um, very remote area that has been absolutely devastated by Cyclone Pam with winds exceeding 320 kilometers an hour, storm surge of 25 feet, swells in the region of 18 to 20 meters. This was a, a very, very big storm that's caused absolute devastation. Dragonfly has been cruising the South Pacific for just over two years now and we've been incredibly fortunate to cruise some of the most remote and beautiful areas here and Vanuatu is no exception to that. We've spent about five or six months here over the last two years and have absolutely loved every minute of our time here. It's one of the most diverse areas in the South Pacific. Incredibly beautiful. They have got some of the nicest uh, village culture that you will ever see. Uh, they are very, very welcoming um, to show you the waterfalls and the areas that you wouldn't normally see as a tourist. Um, coming here on a yacht, they've shown us the volcanoes, um, which are absolutely spectacular. And when we saw the damage caused by Cyclone Pam, we felt that we had to come and help them. Uh, we're obviously a very resourceful entity as a super yacht with a highly skilled crew. Uh, tenders, the ability to make lots of fresh water and we just want to come down and do what we can to help these, these people. Dragonfly, Dragonfly, this is Shore Party. Uh, we're currently feet dry on Matasso break. In the village, uh, we have 160 souls. Um, their all personnel are accounted for. However, be advised there are three fatalities during the storm. I say again, three fatalities break. The biggest problem we're currently having ashore is water. Currently, there are no clean water sources. The only water available is currently held in cisterns. Uh, we examine them. There's not much left, and what there is is highly contaminated. Uh, I recommend we land at the minimum 5,000 liters of water. Let me say again, 5,000 liters. All local crops were destroyed, and no release of supplies have arrived so far. Uh, we are the first people, they say, that have come to this island. Uh, they estimate currently they have three to four days of food remaining. Uh, we see zero animals. We're currently looking at 90% of structures completely destroyed. Uh, almost everything is down here. Uh, the 10% that seem to have survived are severely damaged, no roofs. Medically, we're seeing a lot of kids with running sores, infected wounds, um, some upper respiratory problems. We're seeing some signs of conjunctivitis and yaws, and uh, they're reporting increasing numbers of health issues with the elderly population here. I recommend that we run a full clinic, say again, a full clinic uh, for as much time as we have left here on the island. sucking water from the, um, the deck wash tank and we're filling it. This, these big drums are 1600 litres. We've got four hoses going in here. And once we fill these drums up, we tank up that pump up there. And then we suck all the water from these big tanks down to the fire hose. 
to the kingdom. So we're busy transporting water through, coming out of the big bin, going through the crash pipe, and then ashore to some bigger container that we've given them. So, so far today, I've calculated the water makers running. We've pumped more than 23,000 litres to, to two different islands. The first island was about 20,500 and another 3,200 to this island here. So, you know, we've, we've done good. And the water makers are just about keeping up with the, the discharge. We're trying to run a medical clinic at every island that hasn't received any aid so far. Uh, a lot of what we're seeing is um, trauma from the cyclone with secondary infection and what we suspect to be an outbreak of yours. Uh, most of the treatment we're doing is pretty simple, so just uh, wound cleaning, dressings, antiparasitics and also give them some IM antibiotics to try and knock off the staph infection. <laughs> We just spent the last three hours uh, with chainsaws, axes, handsaws, and as many hands as we could get to move wood and branches out of the way. Because this massive tree behind us um, basically got blown over in the middle of the storm. See the locust asked to clear it away. It was blocking access to their church. It blew on top of another hut over here. What we're doing here is uh, establishing a makeshift waiting room to keep people in the shade. After this gets dirty, it goes slow. When the dirt gets in the filter, it's slow. A bit of contaminated water go into these tanks. Helicopters just dropped off a load of water. We're pumping out of the container here through a little fresh, uh, fresh water pump. Now we're delivering it to the locals here. We've got two storage uh, containers for them. They're decanting straight away so we can be as efficient as possible. I'd like to thank the uh, uh, Dragonfly uh, for assisting us, and uh, I didn't ex we didn't expect that, uh, but we really appreciate the, the captain and the, the crew and the owners of Dragonfly to come and uh, offer us this uh, generous assistance and, and help our people to recover. come to the end of our time here in Vanuatu and I am incredibly proud of what we've achieved. The boat, the crew and the support both at sea and ashore has been absolutely fantastic. We've delivered over 62,000 litres of water, seen and treated over 250 casualties, arranged and facilitated three medivacs and delivered in excess of five or six tonnes of medical and food aid to those that need it most. We're very sad to be leaving and we really hope that the yachting and international community continues to help those that need it most.